Okay. We're uh, Mishnah Bura. Page 60. We're speaking over here about how to dispose of, of a talus or the tzitzis. So the Mechaber says that after, if a string should tear off, you can throw it, put it into the trash. But as long as it functions as a tzitzis, I mean the strings are attached and knots are attached, you cannot use it to tie something because that's called bizu mitzvah. You're disgracing the mitzvah since it still functions within the capacity of the mitzvah, that's bizu mitzvah. The Ramos cites the Yishomrim that even after the string is detached, you have to treat it with respect. So you should not put it into the trash. He says, although it doesn't need geniza, one doesn't have to bury it, put it in regular shamus, but it should be disposed of respectfully. But he says, but a person, th- those who are meticulous in their way they deal with mitzvahs, they all go on his them. They put that also in the shamus. Is shamus considered bearing? Shamus is, the word shamus means the names. The name of Hashem. That's what it's called Shemos. Right. Eventually, it's buried. It is buried. Eventually, they buried. It. It's interesting. There's a. It's true with the response we've done hundreds of years ago. I haven't seen it in many, many years. Before, before Alan became a doctor. That's well, how far back it goes. That's many years. Before Alan uh, graduated high school. Before so, penicillin. So uh, he, there was a chuva that there was this community. They had these lodge um, in the cemetery. They had large, uh, ju- uh, uh, um, they were um, jugs made of, of, of earthenware, like Alabama and the, and, the, and the 40 Thieves, you know, those big, big jugs, those big earthenware. And they would store Seamus in there. They, w- they didn't bury it directly in the ground. And that's what was in the cemetery. And they would leave it there, and they would stay there for years, and it would be exposed to the elements. Eventually, it would totally, it, w- it would disintegrate, turn into dust. It could be there for 50 years, 100 years. And people, they would put it, and they had at different locations in the cemetery, they'd have these very large earthenware uh, jugs or whatever, casks. And that's where the, so this whole discussion, there was a whatever it is, it was scattered. Once it was put there, what is, what is the status of, of the, the shreds of the, of the remnants of the, of the Seamus? That, that's what he speaks about. But it's called Seamus, but again, because we refer to Hashem Hashem. What do we say, Hashem? The name. Because you're not permitted to say the name of Hashem. Once I said this recently to somebody, there's a certain person, observant Jew, I mean, Shomer Shabbos, quasi Shomer Shabbos, uh, whenever you, you'd say, How are you? Today's a man, he's about 97, 96, and he would say, Baruch Adoshem. That's where he'd always respond. Baruch Adoshem. And uh, this person spoke Yiddish. So I said to him, I said, you know, Ramosha has a chuva, has a responsa, that you're not permitted to, s- to say that. Why? If you say the Shem Hashem, you're supposed to say it as it's properly pronounced. Right? Ado, but we don't say it. You're not permitted to say the name of Shem Evein. When we say Hashem, we say it, Hashem means the name. There's no word Ado Shem. It's like saying a person's name is uh, Jack and you call him Yak. <laughs> you're not pronouncing his name properly. You know, it's, it's an embarrassment. I mean, how do you say Adoshem? It's not, there's no word Adoshem. It's Hashem. Rav Moshe writes this in the Chuvah. He has a response on this. I, I said it. He still says Adoshem, even though he's 97 already. So, so I'm saying, so it's called Shemos, Shemos, because that's where we put it, but that's an Ashkenazi term. But it's far they call it Geniza. Right? It means that that's where you, 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 you conceal something. No, Geniza. No, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean buried. Like the Gnese, where they found the, 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 the writings of the Rambam, right? right? Not the Dead Sea Scrolls. Dead Sea Scrolls were not in the Gnese. Cairo Gnese. The Cairo Gnese. They found all kinds of manuscripts there. Yeah. Right, exactly. That's what it was. It was the Gnese. In called Seamus. But Ashkenazim, we refer to it as, as Seamus. Okay. Of course, no, because, because it's the there. It only has Kedusha because of the name of Hashem. On, on, these, on these documents. Because to, and, and if you like the Ramban, all Torah is the Shem Hashem. Right? As the Ramban says. It's uh, just the, the way the letters are conjugated to, to what's his name, to, to, to read, to, to, to spell out the, the narrative. 
No, no, everything. Everything. That's so good. No, no, no. Can't use anything. It's called Tashmishe Kedusha. That's what we're differentiating. Here, the Machab is called Tashmishe Mitzvah. Tzitz is, it's an ordinary object used to do a mitzvah. There's nothing inherent in the strings or in the material that makes it holy. Here, because the box is in, in the integral part of the, of the mitzvah, it's, it has the same status as the parchment. Sure, of course, that's what you do, of course, right. because it's still functioning in its original capacity. Right. But let's say it's the, 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 the bias is, 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 is punctured. Uh, what do you do with it? Could you, t- just, you can't dispose it. It has to be buried. There was a story when they had the uh, Holocaust Museum on uh, downtown. So George Klein was very involved in it. So they have over there a safe Torah that's partially burnt, and they displayed it. Mm-hmm. And one time he was serious, pride himself, he got the safe Torah, it was burnt, and it's on display. So I told him, I told him it has to be buried. You know, what, what's the safe Torah? Uh, 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 the display piece. Mm-hmm. It's not a display, it's, well, if it's, is it's destroyed, it has to be buried. That's, res- that's respectful, that's how you deal with it. Who, de- who, who, wait a second, who determines what's respectful? Who determines what? The halacha dictates what's respectful. That the halacha is a safe It's puzzle and cannot be fixed, has to be buried. Not to display it, because you want to uh, communicate the Holocaust, what they did to us. That's not what, that's not what it is. So he, he didn't hear it so well. So I said, you know something? We'll call it Shlomo Zaman Orbach. Shlomo Zaman Orbach was still alive. Shlomo Zaman says it has to be buried. He says, if you want to leave it on display for another few months, because he can't for whatever it is, just for political reasons and that, but it has to be taken out, it has to be buried. That's what Rishon Zaman Or. Uh, I don't know what they did, but that, that was his psak regarding that particular Sefer Torah. Yeah, you just, well, I'm not saying it depends, you know. Like, I mean, like the one that's I mean, they have a I'm not sure it's the most res- it's, it's definitely not the most respectful way. Mm-hmm. You know? Have I? It's not the most respect a uh, savitor which is kosher. To to show it what it is. I mean that's that's not its function. That's not a function of a safe Torah. To display well, what it is. Ma- the only way I could maybe, maybe no, even it's kosher. The Rambam writes that it's the six hundred thirteenth mitzvah. There's a mitzvah to write a safe Torah. So the Rambam says, What's why is there a mitzvah to write a safe Torah? So you should have a text to study from. Mm-hmm. And that's what since a woman has no obligation of, of to study of Torah, she has no obligation to write a safe Torah. It's the Rambam. Because it's not a mitzvah such as Magrom. It's not time determined. But because the, the thrust of the mitzvah is to have a text to study, a woman has no chiyuv, has no obligation to write a Sefer Torah. So you could say, displaying it, if this will encourage people to have an interest in studying Torah, so that it's within the purview of what the, the, the purpose of a Sefer Torah is. Right? That I could hear. But once it's, it's, it's possible, it's supposed to be buried, so you need, now you're doing something wrong. Because the halacha dictates it has to be buried, not to be displayed. Okay. Rabbi? Yes, David. Call about a year and a half ago, I asked you a shyla. Somebody, a man that I do business with, uh, told me that his father has a gift for me. It was a section of a Yemenite Torah, 400 years old, on leather, uh, on, on, a, on a calf skin. And he had one section of it. And I called and asked you, could I take that as a gift? And you said to me, no, it's got to be uh, buried. Correct. It's based on this where Rishlom Zalman said, Rishlom Zalman Orbach. And, I, and he actually brought it to me uh, when I was visiting with him to show me, and it was in excellent condition, but it was just one section. Yeah. There are many stories, if you go to uh, in Europe, and one time today, I'm not sure, where they have these... Uh, they sell things in boxes, you know, books. And especially, this was very prevalent in, in Paris. 
and you could find, you find, especially after the war, tiny safe Sifri Torah. They were somewhat kosher, some weren't kosher, whatever it may be. You know, they had a, a campaign where they, I, it was with Hungary or one of the uh, republics in Russia where they were willing to give Sifri Torah literally thousands, thousands for a small amount of money. And they're raising money to, 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 to redeem the Sifri Torah. Now, understand, you have no obligation to, to what, what you have to gather all the shamans in the world. I mean, these Sifri Torah, many, they, could, they couldn't be corrected. They couldn't be. They were, they were so damaged due to the elements and during the war, what, what they were exposed to. But they raised fortunes and fortunes of money and the people who were involved in raising the money got a, a very hefty percentage of the money that was raised. And it was a whole, uh, it was a promotion for certain things. Maybe a very small fraction of Sifri Torah were, 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 were kosher or could be fixed. Just, we'll just start the, the Mishnah word. Chutei tzitzis. Vuadin chot hashmishi mitzvah kot sukkah. What about the, board, the boards of a sukkah or the schach after sukkahs? Are you permitted to take the schach, the bamboo, or whatever, just throw it into the trash? Vulul of a shofar, chokai gavna. Lachshin is batla inim omdim od limit. You have a shofar that's, that's, that's punctured. And therefore, it, the, the sound doesn't come out right. What do you do with it? Are you permitted to just take it and throw it into the trash? According to the Machabi, you can put it into the trash. According to Ramah, because it was used for a mitzvah, you're not permitted. You're not permitted. I'll tell you a story about the sukkah in a second. Shenivsku o shetir me'atal shuadin mikorm shasom de beged da'azmon la mil. So what about it? You purchase strings and you don't need them, they, but they were never used for the mitzvah. Everybody agrees. Even the ramo, you can dispose of them any way you want. You can tie a package with it because it was never used for a mitzvah. There was a story with the chasam sofer. He had a yeshiva the chasam sofer, and the famous yeshiva in Presburg. And Presburg, you know, one time Presburg was part of Hungary, and part of Czechoslovakia went back and forth. So there were two students who came to be interviewed, to be tested, you know, whether they were going to be admitted to yeshiva. One was an exceptional genius. The other one had a good mind, but wasn't on the same level intellectually. They didn't have the same capacity. And they're walking into the courtyard of the yeshiva, and it was right after Sukkot. So they... They, the sukkah, sukkah was dismantled and the schach was lying on the ground one of the boys walked on the schach rather than take the, walking around the schach the other boy walked around it it's not Shemus it's Tashmishi Mitzvah the one, the genius, he stepped on the schach the other boy with the good mind wasn't the genius he walked around it the Chassam Sofi interviewed of course the genius was, was exceptional did not accept him so he said to him why did you step on the, uh, on the schach no, it was used for a mitzvah. Okay, so you needed more than just the mind to be qualified to go to the yeshiva there. He did not accept it. Because there's a certain degree of disregard for the mitzvah, he would not accept him. So that's what he says. It's not only the tzitzis, if it's a shofar, it's a lulav, how do you, what, what do you do with it afterwards? See, with bamboo, it's easier. People use, uh, they used to use many years ago. If you go back to Howard's era, okay? They used, to use, they used to use, when you used to drive down the uh, Jersey Turnpike, which is a representative of the state of New Jersey, where, where these things used to, where you could barely breathe, where you could barely breathe, because that's was the pollution was so bad over there. So they used to have, alongside the road, they had pussy willows growing, yeah. like in the swamps. In the 50s, every sukkah had pussy willows right. v'schach. Yeah. Right, the shul, every shul sukkah. Right, they didn't have bamboo. So what do you do it afterwards? So in the shul, Every year they would leave it, and they use lead. They just keep piling it up from year after year. Eventually, it was a question of the shaila whether you could sit in the sukkah because it was so thick. Even if it would rain, the rain wouldn't go come through. <laughs> but private sukkahs, people, you, what would you do? You throw it into the trash. Yeah. That's what you do afterwards. Or you didn't store it. Bamboo, you store bamboo. So this, this, this is the question. According to the machaber, it's not a problem. You can throw it into the trash. According to Ramah, because it was used for a mitzvah, has to be disposed of in a respectful way. So today, people use not that, they use evergreens. Right, evergreens. So the same body do with evergreens. So again, so today where you live out of the city, you put it by the sidewalk, right? The trash coat. So they, they take that separately with the wood and whatever. It's okay, that, that's respectful disposal. 
but to take it and throw it put directly into the trash, that, that's disrespectful, right? So, so the way it's disposed of, it's okay. That's considered respectful uh, disposal. You can burn it. You can burn it. You can burn it. People who have the custom, they use it, they use it they, when they burn the chametz, you burn the lulav, yeah. right? It was used for one mitzvah, you used it for another mitzvah. That's, that's more of an enhancement. Okay, let's do the Mrs. Shari.